Welcome to Lecture 13 of Value Investing and Growing Companies. In the previous lecture, we talked about the importance of annual reports, its sources, and how to read it. The Security and Exchange Commission of US have made a format in 10K form, according to which every company listed on the stock exchange have to present a report according to the laws laid down by SEC. However, the rest of the world does not follow this format rather present an annual report to its shareholders. This annual report is somewhat different from 10K report. Let's skim through the annual report and look for the details we require. We are now looking at the annual report of Unilever one of the world's best known consumer goods company. Unilever is currently working in more than 100 countries selling products in more than 190 countries, and employing around 169,000 people. Let us look at the details we require. 1. Our Purpose Statement Our purpose is a small opening statement of the annual report. These words reflect the company's vision and a word about its performance in the following year. Many analysts and investors insist to read the opening lines of the purpose statement, which can give us a small insight into the business dynamics of the company. 2. Any communication from the promoters and senior management. This includes a statement from the chairman. Unilever's chairman statement includes details about the engagement, evaluation of the company, followed by the board composition and succession, and looking ahead statement. An investor needs to look for any relevant details about word from the chairman regarding any planning from the company, any problem faced during the year, or any solution offered. Next is the Chief Executive Officer's Review. Please refer to the CEO's review section in the annual report of the company. In the annual report, after talking about slower economic growth and lower consumer demand, the CEO of the company seems satisfied by the company's performance along with the hurdles. He says despite this turbulent and challenging backdrop, 2016 was another year of solid progress and achievement for Unilever. Guided by our model of consistent, competitive, profitable and responsible growth, we once again outperformed our markets, with 60% of the business gaining share. Underlying sales growth of 3.7% in 2016 was a good performance in both absolute and relative terms, and would have been higher, but for the impact of demonetization in India and the economic crisis in Brazil, two major markets for Unilever. On the bottom line, profitability stepped up as a result of our organizational change programs and the returns we are now getting on the significant investments we have made in modernizing our industrial base and in upgrading our in-house capabilities. Furthermore, we continue to exert high discipline in capital spending and in working capital, with both improving again last year. The CEO have also emphasized on the future planning of the company. According to him, companies that thrive in this increasingly dynamic environment will be those best able to respond quickly and innovatively to rapidly changing consumer preferences and market conditions, able to display agility on the one hand and resilience on the other. This calls for faster, simpler and more agile organizational models, as well as cost structures that reflect only the costs that consumers are willing to bear. We have been answering this call with a major change program, one of the biggest in Unilever's history. Connected for growth, C4G, will simplify the way we are organized, freeing up time, resource and, most importantly, the entrepreneurial instinct needed to seize the opportunities that a more digitally connected world provides. The changes, which have been developed thoroughly over the last two years, will touch all elements of Unilever and will help to sharpen even further the strong performance culture we have built up at Unilever. Any new challenges mentioned by the CEO should be scrutinized carefully. 4. The Strategic Report This is equivalent to the business model we looked at in the 10K form. Unilever have focused on their economic outlook, economic forces that drives the company, hazards being a fast-moving consumer goods, FMCG, company, environmental and social challenges. The company also explains their strategic focus on dealing with these problems. 
it is advised for every single value investor to go through these details. 5. Unilever have also devoted a whole section on the risk. It is the same risk section we encountered in the previous lecture when looking at Apple's 10K form. Please go through the page 38 till page 41 where the company talks about the risk factors involved and the solutions it offers to tackle all them. 6. The Independent Auditor's Report The Auditor Report is one of the main reports to look for in an annual report. Similar to Apple's 10K form, the audit team of Unilever, KPMG Accountants and V are fairly satisfied with the performance of the company. According to the auditors, on page 79, the accompanying consolidated financial statements give a true and fair view of the financial position of the group as at December 31, 2016, and of its result and its cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with international financial reporting standards as adopted by the European Union, IFRS as adopted by the EU, and with Part 9 of Book 2 of the Netherlands Civil Code and the accompanying NV company accounts give a true and fair view of the financial position of Unilever NV as at December 31, 2016, and of its result for 2016 in accordance with United Kingdom accounting standards, including FRS 101 Reduced Disclosure Framework and Part 9 of Book 2 of the Netherlands Civil Code. The auditors have also highlighted the key risks faced by the company and provided the solutions that can be offered under the scope of an auditor. If an investor have some time, he can go through the details if there are any red flags in the report. 7. Financial Statements We will cover these in the lecture, How to do financial analysis of a company. It is however advised to go through the notes of these financials as they are not available to an investor from financial websites. 8. Report of Corporate Governance, this section focuses on the Board of Directors, attendance record of directors in different meetings, discussion on past and future general meetings, proposed dividends and any other relevant data. The data related to the directors can be seen on page 3 of the annual report. We will be talking more on this in the upcoming lecture of, How to do Management Analysis. 9. Any information on the disclosure of annual general meeting of the company. This brings an end to our lecture on how to read annual reports. There is a famous saying, the devil lies in the details, and this is the very reason it is important to learn how to read annual reports. If an investor can learn how to read an annual report, he can become a very peaceful investor and his assets and investments can surely make him very rich. In the next lecture, we will discuss different components of financial statements. Anyone having finance background can skip this course but I will highly appreciate if you go through it. Till then, happy investing.